The show is brought to you by our generous patrons at patreon.com slash falloutlorecast. Robots Radio presents the Fallout Lorecast. Welcome to the Fallout Lorecast, a place for the Fallout community to come together to explore the boundaries of our knowledge about the world of Fallout. Wastelanders, Vault Dwellers, welcome back to the Fallout Lorecast. This is your host, Tom, or Robots, and it is the end of the month. Actually, I, I lied to you. It is the beginning of the next month, but we had to push back this episode by just a day or two in order to slide this in due to you know my recovering from illness and things this last, this last week. But being as it is technically not really the end of the month, but would have been the end of the month, it is the patron episode, and I am live again with some of our patrons in order to talk about a really cool topic they voted they got together they discussed it and they want to talk about the things that they would do to survive in the wasteland and with me this week some of our patrons including good at game good at game i know this is your first time joining the show welcome to the show buddy how are you doing hey thanks so much man i'm doing great good to be here Awesome. Awesome. And then we also have Lil Green. Lil Green, welcome back. Good to be back again. Yeah, dude. And then Maverick, or some of you might remember him as Pie Man. Maverick is here. Maverick, are, are you are you here? I, I know he's uh, he's had some uh, technical issues. Are you still here? Yeah, I'm still here. Awesome, dude. Dude. Welcome to the Fallout. Oh, wait. No, wrong show. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's uh, he's in um, podcasting mode for his new show, The Fallout Roundtable, which you guys should should be checking out because he and his uh, his regular casting crew, his, his cohorts have been podcasting. You guys now have what? Two episodes out? Yes. Yeah, so our second episode just came out yesterday. That's exciting, man. And they're part of the Robots Radio Rocket Club. So you can go check that out on all the podcatchers and all the regular places. So, guys, I have you here to discuss surviving in the wasteland. And I want to know. So here's here's the here's the here's the layout for you. Here's the scenario. You are thrown out into the wasteland. You find yourself in a very particular situation. And and here's here's a situation that I think is really interesting to kind of put yourself in. Imagine that you are and and this is a game that I'm going to go back and revisit because I've been wanting to go back and revisit after the last time I wanted to go back and revisit Fallout New Vegas and I only got so far until my computer started crashing on me because I think I probably had too many mods installed. So I think I think I'm going to start over again not install a bunch of mods and see if it just doesn't crash out on me so I can play through Fallout New Vegas again because I haven't actually played through to completion in probably a decade. I've played it, but I haven't finished it in about a decade. So I think I want to get back and play through in completion in a decade. But in Fallout New Vegas, you start out and you've been shot. The doctor pieces you back together and you are just sent out into the world. And you don't really have a home base. You don't really have, there's no vault to go back to. You have no family. You're just sent out into the world. You pick up a few different things from Doc's house, which he is so kind to not yell at you for taking, and he gives you some things. And then you're out there in the world. And it's up to you to survive. So this is the scenario. You're sent out into the wastes. And like I do with this show so many times, I want to I want you to imagine actually being in a situation like that yourself. You're not you're not the brotherhood. You're not, you know, equipped. You're you're a regular dude. You are you. From that moment, what do you do to survive? And it doesn't specifically have to be in New Vegas. It could be in any location. It could be in the location that you live right now. But where do you go from that moment of, I don't really have anything. I don't really have a home base. I don't really have a place that I'm coming from. And this world is crazy. It's trying to kill me. Everything's trying to kill me. Where do you go? What is your plan for survival? Who would like to start? Good a game. Do you want to start? I see you kind of. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, what's cool. what's your plan? 
Uh, oh wow. Okay, so I well, I've been I've been cooking about as long since you last beat New Vegas. So about a decade I've been okay. cooking professionally. So th- I I have got that skill. Now in in a situation where you're just dropped out into the wasteland, I mean, you're pretty hard pressed to probably convince a bunch of raiders, you know, don't kill me. I'm a good cook. But <laughs> right, those, right. Yeah, they, they those, come at you with some guns drawn and they're like, yeah. hey, give us your crap or you're going to die. And you're like, can I convince you on uh, maybe a nice dinner? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I, I make a wonderful wasteland souffle. I don't have don't a whole lot, me. but yeah. Uh, hmm. How about a meal? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I think I would just harness that, you know, those skills. Nobody wants to eat, you know, raw glowing meat. People want to eat, you know, cooked glowing meat, and somebody's got to do that. So, okay, so would you, would, you, I, I guess the situation here is you would need to find one people who value that skill, and two people who have the supplies that so that they can right. value that skill like like to, to your point you come across a bunch of raiders they may not even have the uh things that your recipe would need necessarily or at least not in regular abundance whereas right. so you're going to be looking at traders you're going to be looking at uh, employing hunters or hunting yourself or settlements your that way settlements Absolutely. uh cities um, those kinds of things. So where, how, how would you go about this? Let's say you're out in the middle of the wasteland. What is your first step towards finding a settlement? Is, is that your first, your first goal is find, find civilization? I think so. I think so. I mean, we all can't, you know, live, live and thrive absolutely alone. Um, so yeah, I would probably try to get in on the good side of, of whatever settlement and, and, use whatever connections they have uh to to keep myself alive by giving what i can to the to the settlement uh motive or you know values aside okay so you're looking for like a commune you're looking for like some sort of socialist society where you can be like i will do my fair share of work as long as you keep me safe and keep me alive and then absolutely and that work is cooking (laughs) Yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty uh, small guy. Uh, I'm not going to really do well. Uh, I can't run. I've got asthma. I can cook a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. So you'll become you'll become the cook. Um, right. OK. OK. So in the case of somewhere like New Vegas, though, like heading to the strip and taking up with, say, one of the casinos could be very lucrative. Absolutely. I've uh, I've never worked in Vegas myself, but I've known a lot of people, not a lot of uh, rough dogs that have worked in in Vegas. And it's a crazy place to work. And uh, uh-huh. it probably would be similar to uh, New Vegas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in some ways. Yeah. <laughs> busy and dirty and grungy and gross. Uh, yeah. 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 Morally uh, bankrupt in, in some regards. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, all right all right i i can see i can see where this is going um what about the rest of you guys do you think what do you think how do you think this would work out do you think this is a, a good plan for good a game hmm <laughs> i mean <laughs> L- I, I, Green says, hmm. I honestly see the value of having someone who knows how to cook especially in the wasteland because it's <clears throat> it's an important skill to have, especially when you're dealing with meats, you might not know. It's nice to know, like to have someone who's like, Oh, that's cooked perfectly. It won't kill you. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's, you would need some secondary skills as, as well. Like being a chef today requires a, a deeper understanding of it's almost, it's almost like being a chemist. You have to have an understanding of like, if you cook something at a certain temperature, this is what happens to it on a molecular level, right? And and depending on how in depth you get into it, a biologist of sorts, yeah, because uh, you need to know like all the parts of an animal, what are what is good to eat, what is not good to eat, and how to carve it even, right? So right, even get, like like you know butchery and gets put into it, right? And in the wasteland, I feel like that is probably even more important because the animals are so strange mm. and the plant life is so strange and even more dangerous. So, for example, you come across something that has been mutated. Um, that doesn't mean it's going to work just like the regular version that we know from regular life. 
what parts of it are edible? What parts aren't? Are there things that you can somehow reduce the radiation from in order to make it edible? Are there are there uh, venomous creatures that are still edible if you eat certain parts of it or if you prepare them in a certain way, um, just like there are in real life? You know, there are some animals that are extremely venomous, but there are certain parts that you can prepare or eat that actually do work. But you but they're very dangerous and you have to prepare them correctly. Um, I feel like it. It, that could be a very valuable skill to have, but it would take a lot more training and knowledge. And there's the potential for an oops, which could lead to a lot more dire cons- consequences. Um, and Rob the Princess says, I just turned in. Are we talking about cannibalism? That could be another aspect of it. Like, what if you what if you're out there in the wilderness and you come across a settlement and you're like, and they're like, hey, and you, you, you walk up and you're like, hey, everybody, just 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 a traveler, just looking to do some trade or just see if there's anything that, you know, we can do just kind of passing by. And they're like, OK, who are you? What what do you got? And you're like, well, I don't have a whole lot, but I, I don't know. You guys are looking for you looking for anybody who can prepare food? Are you looking for a chef or anything? And they're like, actually, yeah, we could use a chef. We our last one just got killed by some raiders. And you're like, all right, great. What kinds of food do you guys need prepared? And they're like, people. <laughs> So we're talking about the gourmand's <laughs> kitchen then. Yeah, like well, the gourmand's there you kitchen. Go, perfect example. Right. What, what do you say to that good at game? Are you like it, it when it comes down to your survival, are you okay with preparing people even if you're not eating them? If you had to prepare it for other people in order to ensure your survival, are you okay with that? You're not killing my, them. You're okay. just am, cooking them. Am I butchering them? Mm, I mean if they're already dead, maybe. Probably you're still preparing them in some on some level. All right, I I say hey, <laughs> I, I got I gotta survive. I don't want to turn around and walk away and risk getting eaten by the. Yeah, I'll cook some people. Absolutely <laughs> right because they might just want to eat you. That's the other side of this, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I would a hundred percent cook a couple few <laughs> humans for them and then dip out when they're sleeping or something. Oh man, that's that's rough, but that's that's where these games go though, right? Like oh, wow. Wow. It makes a great hollow tape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well I feel like this becomes one of those like gangster movies or TV shows where like you get in, sleep slightly put, stick your foot in the door and then like you just can't figure out a way out because you know if you try to get out, they're going to come after you because you're, you're already too in, in too far. You know what I'm saying? Like, oof. yeah, for, for me, though, I would I, I guess I have a massive interest in power armor. So I think I might, the uh, you know, push comes to shove, have to just take them all out. If you come across enough weaponry and power armor to do so. For sure. If I'm in danger, I mean, I'm looking out for myself. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Save up, save up some caps, meet some brotherhood types or just anybody who has some extra gear kind of stock up and then one night just take them all out. (laughs) Right. Right. I mean, yeah, if I was partnered with a faction or something, they would have my back with cannibals. I think I would have to black market it or something. Yeah. Oof. Oof. I mean, this definitely sounds like a type of playthrough that I've done before, (laughs) you know? Right. (laughs) Right. Um, Oh, man, Maverick, do you have any thoughts on this? He's I don't know if he's having audio issues or not. If you do, feel free to chime in. Yeah, he's I, I think he's kind of dipping in and out. Um, all right. Well, any other thoughts on, on survival? Let's let's move on to a, a second question for you. Good at game. Let's say. You can't find let, let's go to a, a second scenario here. Let's say you can't rely on cooking for survival. Do you have a backup plan? What's your backup plan? Let's say, or let's say you can't find a settlement where cooking is needed. What if they're like, yeah, we've got a chef. Oh, that's a, I mean, that's a good question. I mean, how much evidence in these games, it doesn't really matter, but how much evidence do we have of people being a bard? Not much. Um, there's there doesn't I mean a little bit like in places like New Vegas and in places there are performers. Um, but like bards as in like traveling performers, I, I don't off the top of my head. I can't I can't think of very many. Um, if anything, there are 
uh, I mean, there's like radio hosts. There are people who perform but don't necessarily travel that I can think of. But traveling performers, that seems like a rarity. Um, and I think that's probably because in most uh, it, it's like Maslow's hierarchy of needs um, in situations where people are struggling for survival. They have less uh, less time and need for entertainment because right. they're focusing mostly on survival. They're fo- focusing mostly on those, you know, food, uh, safety, those kinds of things. Right. Um, so uh, there is that side of it. Um, but I mean, that doesn't mean you couldn't try. Right. Right. Well, I- I think what I would do in, in this case is is kind of exactly how I play the games personally, which which is sticking very close to a safe place for a long time before branching out <laughs> further and exploring and discovering. So I, I think I would try to immediately find a settlement of people to not, you know, necessarily leech off of, but learn survival tactics and and, and things like that to eventually move on my own i'm pretty solitary so i i think i would learn things and and then move away at a slow pace you know not using people but in a weird way i guess it is a wanderer right right yeah some wanderlust there so like and just an adventurer at heart somebody who just kind of only stays for so long and then moves on right cook you some good food yeah that makes sense uh aiden smith writes herbert daring dashwood who was an adventurer like that was ah uh, yeah that was his thing right he was he was in, like he wasn't really a bard but he was he was an adventurer he was somebody who was always on the move and and you know doing grand deeds and those kinds of things right um, awesome so somebody like that somebody who who could spin a yarn and tell a tale and made himself out to be more you know interesting than he actually was probably <laughs> yeah taking the silver shroud on the road yeah yeah there you go there you go yeah there's some value to that. Um, also, you know, somebody like that often makes their, their, uh, the image of themselves more important and ominous even than they actually are. And so their reputation kind of precedes them. So people are less likely to mess with them because, oh, I've heard of you, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, right. The coveted legacy. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So yeah, that, that's a cool, that's an interesting idea. Um, for sure. Cool. 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 All right. Um, Lil Green. Yes. Do you let's let's wrap up good at games thing. Do you think that the uh, the traveling adventurer would work out? Have you considered this as a survival technique? I mean, it's something that I'd probably do myself, especially since like I don't have like a like a very strong set of skills other than like I'm like you know as a, a, by training or trade i'm a photographer there's not many (laughs) needs for a photographer but like with that comes like a lot of like other skills like i'm very good with working with my hands building stuff cooking obviously since we discussed that before the show yeah and 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 even like other skills like i i blend i'm I've taught myself to blend into crowds very easily. So, so um, if I'm like doing like a surprise proposal photo shoot, like no one recognizes a guy with a giant camera. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, <laughs> maybe you could be just be like that, like the guy who looks so much like a regular guy that nobody notices him. Yeah, like that's, that's your that's super. What it is. That's your superpower is like totally not noticeable guy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's totally it's, average it's, man. Yes, it's a skill that I have kind of learned but it it's it's actually a useful skill when you just don't want to be bothered or you're trying to kind of spy on someone spy <laughs> right right well it's um, it's it's like the idea behind um like uh ninjas like actual ninjas in japanese history weren't like fictional ninjas like they didn't they didn't sneak around in black robes and cool you know masks and and things like that because that would make them stand out Right. Like yeah. you, you if you happen to notice a dude sneaking around in all black clothing when nobody wore all black clothing, you'd be like, what's that dude doing there? Right. That'd be like super weird. Yeah. But what they actually wore was the same thing as everybody else wore, because that's what made them blend in 
was by looking like the peasants and the regular people that they actually were a part of. And by blending in with the commoners is how they were able to sneak around. So <laughs> so they looked like farmers and, and regular, you know, workers and, and people like that. So, yeah, so, yeah, that's how ninjas worked. Um, but yeah, so that, that totally makes sense. I, I could I could see that. We'll take a break. I'll thank our patrons and I've got a review to read out and then we'll be back and we'll continue with the rest of the show. If you know anything about me, you know that I'm totally into stories that are really dense with lore, interesting characters, dark and mysterious worlds. And that's why I'm excited about our sponsor today. You've probably heard of the hit show Shadow and Bone streaming on Netflix. But did you know that that series is based on the Grishaverse, the number one New York Times bestselling books by Lee Bardugo? Now, I'm excited because season two of the hit show Shadow and Bone is now streaming on Netflix. But if you're interested like I am in exploring the universe more or just getting into a really solid fantasy world, then go check out the books. The Grishaverse is a lavish fantasy world in which science and magic collide. So if you haven't already, I recommend you get started with the book Six of Crows, learn more about Alina Starkov's journey, and enjoy a universe that Bustle calls the best magic universe since Harry Potter. To learn more, go to Grishaverse.com, that's G-R-I-S-H-A-V-E-R-S-E.com, or go pick up your copy of Six of Crows wherever books are sold. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. All right, here we are in the middle of the show. This is where we get to thank our patrons. So these guys and everyone else who helps to support this show every every month. And you guys, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it because it's because of you guys that I'm able to do this as a full time thing. The people who support the show, the people who support the other shows, everyone who listens to the show. Thank you so very, very much for being here. Um, we have a brand new patron this this last week, Stephen B. Thanks for signing up. And thank you to all of our patrons, all 44 of you who have supported the show this last month. And um, if you're interested in checking out the Patreon, if we've helped you get through your work week, your workout, your commute to work, or you cashing in that extra rewards thing at Dairy Queen and getting that, you know, any size blizzard and so you're you're like i'll get the medium and then your wife's like it's any size you might as well get the large and then you're like uh okay and then you get the large one and then you eat the large one anyway and then your wife's like you should save some because then you can put it in the freezer and have it for tomorrow and then you're like yeah okay that's a good idea and then you end up up eating the whole thing and then you have to do a podcast afterwards and then now you're like oh my god i ate an entire large blizzard um if that happened to you and uh you're feeling kind of full because of it. Go to patreon.com slash fallout and check out all the different tiers because even at the lowest tiers, you can get ad free episodes for all the different episodes that are on the Patreon. And even the higher tiers allow you to do things like join us on episodes like this or get T-shirts or stickers, all sorts of things. So go check that out. And uh, <laughs> we also have a new review that came in. This one is super interesting, guys. Check, listen to this. So this one is from that, that podcast kid from the U.S. who wrote in and said, this is the best podcast ever. I find this is probably one of the most unique reviews ever listen to this hello my name is nicholas saldana and i love the podcast and even though i never got the chance to play any fallout games this podcast has made me extremely engaged in the whole fallout universe all thanks to your podcast keep up the good work a fan of the Fallout universe who hasn't even gotten a chance to play the games yet i'm guessing they check out content on youtube or twitch or whatever but actually hasn't even played the games for themselves so Thank you so much for taking the time to leave that review. If you listen on Apple Podcasts and or just even have an account and would like to take the time to leave us a five star review and you put in some words and then I'll read it out in a future episode of the show. Also, I know a good 50 percent of you at least listen on Spotify and they have a way to review shows now. So if you go to the page where you can see all the different episodes, if you scroll to the top and then look down below the title and the description, if you leave us a five-star review on there, that would be super helpful because Spotify now ranks shows according to the average rating. So if you leave us a five-star review on that as well, that would be a huge help. So thank you to everyone who takes the time to do that. Thank you to all of our patrons. You guys are amazing. I'm going to continue digesting this uh, gigantic blizzard and get back to the rest of the show with our patrons. Here we go. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. 
Uh, yeah, yes, little green. I'm um, talking from experience. I, I, I told my wife I just needed a medium size one, and she's like, "But you can get any size you want." I'm like, "I don't need a large. I will eat the whole thing once it's in front of me. I'm just gonna eat it." Always get the large. Always, always, always get. I don't need. I don't need that many more calories. I just, I just, I'm not gonna save it. I'm just gonna keep eating it. I know me. I know how yeah, this but, works. But it's any size. <laughs> I know, right? Uh uh <laughs> treat yourself uh yeah treat treat myself <laughs> to, tweet yourself treat myself bro. to diabetes is what i'll do all right <laughs> all right so um <laughs> all right sounds like maverick's mic is working maverick did you want to chime in on any of good at game uh good at games theories here about survival so okay let, let's recap on that then because i heard every third word uh, okay so you didn't really hear much of it okay well here why don't we jump to you now that we've got an actual good connection going what would you do for as long as we've got a good connection going right here what would you do for survival in the wasteland okay so what i would do as far as in the wasteland i would do uh first i'd uh figure out what's going on because it because me because if it would be me i'd probably be coming out of a vault somewhere okay but in this scenario you're not coming out of a vault you're just no. you were just patched up by a doctor like in Fallout New Vegas, and you're just sent out the door. You have no family. You have oh, no vaults. Okay, okay. You're just okay. out there. Like you're out in the wilderness, and you've got no home base. And it's like, go survive. What do you do first? First, I would have to find a, uh, a weapon. That's probably a good idea. And where would you go look for a weapon? I would probably, probably, and I don't don't condone this probably find a home because you know homes people probably have weapons at this point well I, i'm i'm assuming you're just finding whatever structures are nearby yeah but, yeah but you don't really know if anyone's in them like it's no, it's fun it's the wasteland right like who even knows if people are in the buildings like that's the whole thing like you come across any structure it all of them look run down you don't know if anyone's in the structure until you're up on it. So you don't know if it's a home, like a home in that context is anywhere people are living, but people are living in all sorts of weird types of locations, right? So you don't even, you don't know if it's a home or not. This is just true. Until you're up on it. So I guess you're just looking for whatever structures you can come by to just kind of loot and see what's there. I mean, that's the fall experience, right, man? That's like, see what's there. Yeah. So you would you would like go looting. That's that's your your first instinct is just start searching for stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My first instinct would probably be to go looting for stuff, and then uh, uh, and then probably find find civilization because us humans you can't put a good human down. There's there's almost always a way that will pop back up somewhere. Mm -hmm. A no good human meaning like small, people, you know, people who survive. Somewhere. Right. Right. There, there's always, you're going to find a settlement somewhere. Yeah. 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 Right. Not necessarily yeah, morally good, or but like uh, people will survive. Even if it's just a house out in the middle of nowhere. Right. Right. Now, how, how do yeah, you go yeah, about? Yeah. Not like morally right but people will survive how, how do you go about convincing them when you when you meet them that one you're not a threat and two what, what like what are you trying to are you convincing them you should be you should live there mm, it would be more like i'd be i'd convince them first to to get in I would uh, convince them that I'd be like uh, just a wanderer, just passing through, looking for supplies and stuff. Okay. Uh, then uh, probably, probably if I like it, you know, like it there if it's big enough or 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 if it's safe enough, I'd probably uh, try to work my way up from there, gain people's trust maybe participate in the settlement gossip in, in the saloon or whatever it is. So you'd work your way in socially. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. And then, and then go all the way to the top. 
<laughs> you want to run the settlement? Is that your your ultimate I goal? I will run it. You'll become the I'll leader. Run to the crown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, I would. Yes, I would go try to rise through the ranks socially, but but I would only do it try to make the settlement better, not actually run it to the ground. Yeah, I, I got just you. for I got everyone you. for context because yeah. people are out there. <laughs> I get it. You were joking, um, but yeah. but socially, so you would you would find like the social place, like the salute, the the bar, whatever, and you would start making social connections to tr- then try to yeah, like yeah, integrate friends. yourself. Right. Uh, that's interesting. Okay. Okay. So less of a like, hey, who needs work, and more of a like actually making social connections in order to integrate yourself and make yourself kind of feel, you know, connected with the people there, so that fit in. Yeah. Be a ghost. All right. I, that makes sense. Okay. What do you guys think about this? Uh, good game or, or low grain? What do you think about this strategy of like looting and then finding a community and then working your way in socially? I mean, it does seem very solid because that's kind of what you do in almost every of the Fallout games as it is too. Minus all like the, you know, like the, like the questing. So because mm-hmm. it's one of the first things that I always seem to do is like, all right, find a place to stay and <laughs> to call my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, like that's that's it's a solid thing because then also like then you don't have to worry about like anything else as long as you can fit inside whatever society you find, you're kind of set until something bad happens. Really, assuming that they take you in, assuming yeah. that you socially do, <clears throat> it does work out, right? Yeah. Um, yes. Because I mean, there, there's always the potential that you don't fit in socially, like. Some social groups just don't click like yeah. maybe maybe or maybe you don't like them. Maybe you maybe you get to the settlement and they're a bunch of cannibals and you're like, I don't think I want to fit in with these guys. You know, like there's there, there's a hundred different variations on what could or could not happen. But assuming that you want to fit in and assuming that you do, it seems it seems like an actually, you know, reasonable tactic. Right. You you, yeah. scra- you scavenge until you have the supplies you need. You find a settlement. You work your way in socially. Um, and I would I would assume that you then have to prove yourself through through work and effort. Um, Good at Game started with work. Uh, Maverick started with social. But both of those things probably are two parts of let's go back to cooking the recipe for making sure that you can fit in with a with a settlement. Right. Um, now, I, I guess at, at some point you need both, but to, you have to start with one or the other, right? You know, which yeah, one do you which one do you pitch so first? Do you pitch second thing? Do you pitch the you know the value of of work, or do you pitch the you know connect, social connection? You know, what was that, Maverick? Yeah, I also had a second thing. Yeah, I had a second thing that I wanted to bring out here. That another thing that I would do is I'd become a bounty hunter. Okay, so that would be like the job that you would pitch is I you know, bounty hunting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, that seems like a dangerous like the Mandalorian. Yeah, know? yeah. Hey guys, did you have, has anyone seen here seen the Mandalorian? I can do that. Um, do you, man, that sounds like a dangerous job. That's some dangerous work. You feel like you're cut out for that I, kind I mean, of work. That's how. I, I mean, my character in the game is. I don't know me personally, and. Um, until I actually got into it and actually did it, you know, you feel like, well, here's the thing. Bounty hunters have to be morally gray enough to be able to hunt down people regardless of if they're good or bad. They do it for the money. Do you feel like you could do that? In the wasteland? Yeah. Yeah, I think I could do that. Like, it doesn't matter their situation. It doesn't matter if they're good people or bad people. It doesn't matter if you have to kill them in front of their kids or bring them in in front of their families or whatever. It doesn't it doesn't matter. You just are doing the job because it's a job. Yeah, because you got to do what you got to do out in the wasteland to survive. I mean, it's it's true. Even if that means even if that means you got to do a couple morally gray things out there it doesn't mean that I'll, i won't feel bad about it later but yeah. in the heat of the moment no i got you i mean it's it would be naive to think that any of us could be could live in a wasteland situation and get through it without having to do some sort of morally 
sticky things, <laughs> like some morally rough. Yeah, yeah make some, some morally rough decisions. Training, right? Trading, do some. Right, They're, you're going to have to do some, make some rough decisions. Um, so, I, I guess in, in that case, you know, at least you're going into it knowingly, you know. Um, but at the same time, as a bounty hunter, you have some some leeway in deciding who you take jobs from. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit of that as well. What do you guys think? Good at game? Little green? Ooh. This one's sticky, man. It's, um, it's, it's a, it's, it's rough. I mean, any of those kinds of jobs, I mean, one, it, there's, it's morally great, but two, it's difficult. It's that's hard work. And right, dangerous. It's hard work. You've got some training, obviously. So you, you kind of know what you're doing. Um, I, I mean, if I had to, personally, I wouldn't be a bounty hunter. But if I had to, I mean, I, I would have a limit, right, of, of, of how heinous the crime is. If, if the crime is somebody kidnapped this girl and her dad came and got her back, and now the original person wants the dad dead, I'm not going to go do that. But sometimes you don't <laughs> yeah. even know the story. Sometimes, you, you, right. like, you, like, oftentimes the bounty, bounty hunter doesn't want to know the story. They just... They just want to know this is the target. This is the payout. Don't tell yeah. me. This, don't tell me the details. Too much of an anxious person to take that job. Yeah. I mean, it's it's hard, you know, and like you're not only dealing with the person you're taking in, but you're dealing with whatever protection they have where whatever situation they're in when you get to them. Um, right. Like if you say no to a job, you who knows if they're going to turn around and try, try to kill you for saying no. Cause now you know something you're a link somewhere. Could be. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, and, and uh, what situation can you get through that and not be potentially hurt in some way? You know, like even if you survive those situations, you're still potentially going to be, you know, injured. Right. It's yeah. Rough work. I, I'm definitely not a, 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 a cap influenced wastelander i'm very solo <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's rough work little green i mean it is a viable thing honestly because like it like, you know bounty hunting is probably something that and no matter how society is it's gonna be a job that people want done oh i i can imagine you get to that settlement <laughs> and somebody's like Hey, we got some problems with the Raiders. You go take out their boss and I've got some caps for you. I mean, there you like, go. Yeah. that's a That's a real easy one, you know, or or, you know, just like the, the guy in the bar down the street. He's competition. You know, get rid of him. You know, like either or, you know, those things are going to crop up. Yeah, it's it's something that whether good or bad, you got to stay, you know, you got to stay in the gray of like, all right, it's a job. Yeah. So as long as you have the mentality for it. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't put a target on your back why not right well there's a reason why like you wear a mask <laughs> when you do those kinds of jobs yeah yeah um yeah it's it's, it's an that's an interesting call maverick like i don't know i don't know that i could do it but i'm sure there's people out there who would and you'd make some good caps for it probably yeah oh, probably yeah well, Lil Green, let's let's move on to you, buddy. What do you think? You're out there. You're out there in the wasteland. You need to survive. What do you do first? Honestly, it's kind of like the same story of like finding protection of some sort. So, like, f find a, whatever weapon I can find. Like, I could get my hands on. I mean, me personally, I always have a knife on me. So, like, you know, I might be have that, but. I need more and yeah. then just finding yeah. shelter or a place to live and just go from there. It's just trying to rebuild a life. So I'm just trying to fulfill my needs first and just see where I am. That's really that's a, it. That's a good point. Um, what needs specifically, like we haven't really talked about needs beyond things like uh, finding a community, uh, finding protection, like weapons and things. But like, what about even things like food. You know, obviously food, food, shelter, fire, companionship what about like other people i personally can be like by myself for a long period of time mm -hmm. so like finding a society might not be a top priority it's just taking care of myself so like do i have i need a place to shelter me from the elements mm -hmm. find myself some food and 
fire and water. So, so it's just like cover my basic needs. Now I could live. Now I could make things better from there. Mm-hmm. So that's just my first step. But like the next thing would be ultimately getting back into some sort of community and then using whatever skills and fulfilling whatever hole they need. So it's just taking it easy. I'm not going to be, or, you know, if I come across like the NCR or some military fact or security force, I'm like, okay, Hey, you know, they can provide everything I need, including protection, food, water. Is it a hard life? Yes. Is it a risky life? Yes. But is it guaranteed? You know, yes, because, you know, everywhere you go in the fallout world, there's some military protective force. <clears throat> so you're saying you would sign up. So like, if you came oh, across yeah. uh, the, the NCR, like a, a patrol, you, you would go up and say, hey, you guys look like you know what you're doing. I uh, my, my video just froze. So I'm gonna, say, I'm fix it. Um, but you, you'd be like, hey, you guys know what you're doing. I I think you guys are cool. How about you point me in the direction to where I can sign up and, you know, yeah. I, I'd, yeah, like, I'd like to join you. <laughs> like, Because I feel like that is like a good way of saying like, yeah, all of my needs will be taken care of. You know, I might be putting myself in a risky situation on the daily, but you know what? It'd be worth it. And, and especially just even just living in the fallout world is a risky situation because like you got all different types of just like creatures that roam the wasteland you got raiders that roam the wasteland and i feel like dealing with them as a just a typical civilian it's it's not it's it's tough it's tough it's rough yeah well, here's here's another perspective on that you sign up for somebody like the ncr they don't only have soldiers yeah they have an entire structure underneath that so they have uh infrastructure they have um, like the Brotherhood has scribes, right? The NCR has people who uh, work back at the bases that maintain yeah. the paperwork that deal with uh, just, you know, the personnel and documenting things and coordinating and communications. And like th- there's lots of different roles. There's not not everyone is out there on patrol or dealing with, you know, raider insurrections or, you know, some of them are just like, hey, how do we get water to the nearby you know, yeah. settlement so that we just you don't always have to have a rifle in your hand. You could just be, you know, trying to make things better. But, right. you know, you have right. the military title. Right. Right. And, and, and basically the NCR is kind of like a government. They're, they're like a, a governmental organization in a way. Yeah. Um, so you might find a role in something like that that isn't, you know, on the front line where you could fit yeah. in. Now, <laughs> where would you feel like you would fit in in, in something like that? I mean, I guess one thing that I could say I'm good with would probably be scavenging because I'm always good at just finding random things or like things that are needed. Really? Wow. Yeah. And I I, I hate looking for stuff. I'm so (laughs) bad at it. (laughs) And it's just um, being an idiot teenager. I've gone in and out of buildings that I should not have been in and out of and like safely. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) But like, you know, I, like I know how to get around dangerous situations like and like uh, just being able to search out things. So I'm very I'm good on my feet. And it's, it, I guess it's a good way to say it. So mm-hmm. I guess you know, a scavenger would be something I'd be good at. So a Cooking scout would be something I'm good at. So like scouting. Even just yeah. labor, just laboring. OK, yeah, yeah. So scouting, yeah, that'd be something else. So it's just. Um, you know, I mean, th- your I, photography I skills may actually might actually work for something like a scout. Yeah, that, that's true because I know like they're like it's not a big thing, but also I know how to develop film because that seems to be the one thing that they use in Fallout mm-hmm. since cameras mm-hmm. are still a thing, but it's all like old fashioned stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I guess you know a scout of some sorts would be where I'd go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So what do you guys think? Good a game, Maverick. What do you what do you think? Taking up with somebody like the NCR. Trying to enlist? Does that sound like a good survival technique? Good well, game is shaking me, his for head. Me, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be the NCR. Everyone knows I have a bias towards the Enclave. Oh, all right. Yeah. Well, e- even if you listen to to the 
to the finale of our Factions at War tournament on the Fallout Roundtable. <laughs> you, you, you very much know that I have a bias towards towards the Enclave, even though I have to be the impartial and sometimes judge and moderator. Oh, but you, you still have to pick a side in the end. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Well, all right. What do you think of a game? Yeah, I, uh, I don't want none of it. I want no business in any of it. But any any <laughs> faction, I, I would so much rather dupe a poor community of people with my resourcefulness, you know, get get what I need and get out of there and go on my own. Uh, I just have so many conflicts with uh, the NCR's choices, the Brotherhood's choices, the, you know, the uh, it goes on and on. Of course, the, these factions are meant to have just a little bit about them that's or a lot about them that's really messed up. None of them are perfect. It's true. It's there's always something that you're going to be like, I don't know if I like this part. It's yeah. how it goes. Yeah. 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 Well, guys, I've got one more question for you. And I think that this one might be the most important question of all. So you're out there on on your quest for survival before you've reached the settlement or the faction that you've been trying to get to or, you know, whatever your goal is. And over the horizon comes running up a floppy eared dog. Oh. What do you do? Do you do you do you take on a dog meat? Do you is like a potential companion also yes. gonna eat some of your food? Yes, in a heartbeat, yes. <laughs> yes. So, I'd rather deal with a dog than a human sometimes. All right. So Lil Green, who said, eh, I could be about oh, good on my own, is like, yes, but in the case of dog meat, absolutely. Yes. <laughs> but yeah. also, like, it's it's a companion that, yes, they're going to take some of your food, water. But, like, I mean, it's someone that can hear or sense things that you can't. Right. Right. It's a 24-hour so, alarm system. Yes. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Uh, good at Game has a cat. Uh, on his lap right now uh um, when we're not talking cat yeah. meat we're talking dog meat so what do you think oh yeah i would i would definitely take dog meat a hundred percent if i had the option to take cat meat sure <laughs> yeah i have a little kitty but dog meat absolutely <laughs> all right maverick dog meat yes yeah i think we're all in agreement definitely dog meat all right v- uh variation on the question Instead of dog meat coming over the horizon, it's a Mr. Handy. And the Mr. Handy is uh, is similar to in like Fallout 4. But of course, you're not in you're not in Fallout 4. You're not in the Fallout 4 situation. But that Mr. Handy confuses you for its former master and is like, oh, sir, so good to see you. I've been missing you for so long. What do you do? Do you take on the Mr. Handy and pretend that you are its long lost master? I mean, yeah, that takes no resources and it's protection because Mr. Handy's, you know, they have like their like, you know, built in like weapons of sorts. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, without any hesitation. Oh, like, that's my name. I'm sorry. You must have gotten damaged. My name is such and such. Come on, Uh Codsworth. (laughs) Mr. Pillsbury, so good to see you, sir. That's yeah. yes, that's right. I'm Mr. Pillsbury, right? Yes. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good again. Yeah, no. Good again. So, yeah, especially something that has lasted about two hundred plus years and is still functioning. It's it's done something to survive. <laughs> right. Right. So no, yeah, I'll I'll take it, Mr. Handy, in a heartbeat. Right, Maverick, you're you're on board with this. Yes, yes, for basically the same reasons that Little Green pointed out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good a game? No, so. no, that's that's some aluminum and some steel scrap. I'm taking it. You're going to break it down? Yeah, I don't want that thing around. It's just, <laughs> you, can't, you can't turn it off. You're going to be like, yeah, yeah, that's me, that's me. Here, turn around for a moment. And then you're going to like disconnect the wires and power down and then just pull the I parts mean, out. Either- Either that or or be like, yep, I'm your master. Hey, I need you to go to Hawaii. <laughs> go to Hawaii right now. Find a way. Give him a mission. I need you to go to Hawaii. And then, you know, 
kind of no problem after that. Unless he goes to Hawaii and he comes back, then you got a problem Mm -hmm. or a great companion. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Last variation on the question. You found your first place to to kind of bunk up for the night. And you've fallen asleep and you wake up in the morning. And you didn't realize it, but in the middle of the night, you roll over and uh, you were so tired when you fell asleep that you had placed your your bedding right up to next to this corner with all this like rubble and stuff in it. And among the rubble was an egg and the egg is hatching when you wake up and out from the egg comes a little baby death claw that just hatches right out of this egg. And the first thing it sees is you. And it has now like locked its eyes on you and thinks it's your mother. It's it's your its mother. Do you keep it and hope to train it as your own little baby death claw and try to raise it as your like pet death claw so that it protects you from that point on and hopefully you can make it, you know, like a domesticated death claw? Or do you do something else? What do you do with it? I GTFO. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because that egg was hatching, so it was being taken care of, which means Mama is still in the area. <laughs> I GTFO. Mama's still there. <laughs> you're just like you're like uh nope i get out of there what if it okay so what if you get out of there let's let's continue your your scenario specifically i want the two other people to think about this uh your scenario specifically you get out as fast as you can you travel for a good mile or so but then you look back and you notice that this this thing has just followed you what do you do then then i i guess i'm i have a companion and then like i'll take care of it yes but if it starts to get you know like a little too close and a little nibbly on me for some reason then you know it's it has to i had to, I have to take care of it honestly because like it's like the size of a puppy right now it's like but still like, it's like a, yeah. a baby death clock could still probably kill me i mean it's <laughs> yeah, maybe like it's like the size of like a, a cat you know like it's yeah, a but, cat still, it's, but um i don't know i it's it's something that my first instinct is run away but if it is attached to me then i try and take care of it as best as i can but it's just one of those fears of like it's still an irradiated wild animal that its first instinct is to kill everything around it (laughs) right so but how cool would it be if you had like a full-grown death claw that was like yeah it'd be great just walking around and having like a death claw pet thought it was your if that was the path mom i'd take it right and like didn't harm you and yes. it was like your your watchdog. Nobody would mess with me. Nobody would mess with you <laughs> Nobody ever. Nobody would mess with me. You would be the most badass person in the wasteland. Yes. If that was the situation, yes. I first run away. If it follows me and I'm not dead an hour later because mama <laughs> found me, uh-huh. I guess, yes, I have a companion. Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Maverick, what do you think? Hmm. Um... So going back to the very beginning, uh huh. You wake up, the death claws hatching out of the egg. Nah, for, first I would, I'd probably. Where would this egg be placed, though? That's it's, the it's thing. Like in, it's like in the corner of the room, like in the rubble next to where you were sleeping. It was dark when you okay. lay down. You didn't notice it. You wake up, the lights, you know, the sun's up, the and there's you know just in the rubble, kind of mixed in with a bunch of all the debris. There's a, an egg and it's, it's attaching. I, I'm probably overthinking this because I'm trying to think tactically here. Uh-huh. <laughs> see if see if Mama's still around or if she, yeah, well, if Mama's still around, idea. I am a hiding because there is no way I can outrun a death claw. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely no way. I I'd be death claw chow. Right. Okay. So in this in a scenario where Mama's nowhere around, what do you do? Oh, oh, oh! I'd I'd run for the hills. You're just getting out. You're just like you're just yeah, leaving. I'm running for the hills. You're getting away from that little baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Good at game. What do you think? I'm snatching that baby up. <laughs> taking the baby. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm taking that baby, 
and and I'm going to do my best to train it, to domesticate it. And, and I mean, not considering that process, all, all I've wanted ever, ever, ever in life is to ride on the back of a centaur. And a death <laughs> is pretty good. That's pretty, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a saddle and my super than sledge, a you know, two handed super sledges would be great. If you dressed and, up like uh, Abraham Lincoln on the back of that death claw, that would be even more awesome. <laughs> wow. With yes. a, a super sledge and a laser rifle. Abraham Lincoln ghoul slayer. That would be amazing. Ooh, yeah. That sounds great. Yeah. That would, uh, and that would go into your stories as your wandering adventurer stories. You could call yourself Abraham Link- Lincoln ghoul slayer. <laughs> and take pictures you could meet up with Lil Green who would take pictures he would be your like your like marketing person who would take pictures of you and disperse them around the wasteland the White House photographer yeah there you go there you go and then I love the sound of that yeah to, like paint the uh, the stories around the Commonwealth or wherever you happen to be living or whatever it was you know like but it would work really well if it was the Commonwealth or you know somewhere more patriotic and uh the you capital know, wasteland. The capital waste. That's what you're thinking. Of. E- either of those would work. E- you know, e- e- either of those two very patriotic locations, and you could just go with that. That would be awesome. So yeah, and then and then, I, and then I'd hunt him down. And then, then you know, somebody would put <laughs> somebody would put <laughs> a hit on you, and Maverick would have to come hunt you down. But then you'd have to deal <laughs> with fighting a dude with a death claw, a super sledge, and a laser <laughs> rifle. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Wow. Done stealthily. This is this has come full circle. This is amazing. This has been a great episode, guys. Thank you for joining me. Um here, let's go back through and feel free to share anything that you guys are doing, any cool stuff you're working on, and ways people can reach out to you. Let's start with good at game. What do you got going on? Yeah, hey, just uh you can find me on Twitter, uh good at game. On a death claw. <laughs> on a death claw with two super sledges and uh, yeah hit me up on twitter and uh, see what i'm up to awesome dude thanks for joining and little green uh you could find me if you want and check out some of my personal work on uh, instagram at little green underscore photography or you could find me sometimes in the discord chat but uh yeah i'm really not working on anything because it's cold and snowy outside in new jersey right now so but uh. yeah, yeah yeah it got down into the 20s the other day uh, when, when, the, when the cold weather came down here to florida uh, it, 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 in the 20s is bad it's been like the teens and single digits up around me yeah i bet i bet but yeah 20s in florida is like we don't know what to do we don't know what oh, we, it's bad. what is oh, that yeah. what is this Dude, temperature tw- 20s in florida is a heat wave for us up north oh i bet <laughs> I, i'm sure i'm sure but in florida we're yeah, like no, what is going in the on 20s, it's bad I, I i i can i'm not gonna be like oh this is like no it's bad it's weird <laughs> it's weird it, like you know uh you know lizards fall out of trees and stuff it's you know like, that is so freaking hilarious yeah it's, it's it's super the alligators like stay under the water and they keep their noses up above the surface so if the water freezes they can hibernate it's it's weird awesome. yeah it's super weird uh maverick i know you got the fallout round table going on so people should tune into that you got anything else happening not much <laughs> not just much working staying just warm working on the podcast trying trying to get everything all up to date and everything we have a production meeting thursday for the pot for the round table cool you got any cool topics coming up that you want to share uh episode three episode three comes we record we're going to record it next week because this is a bi-weekly show because mm, of course i had to get three drive three transportation experts and <laughs> and a lot of us oh, okay I see. don't have a lot of time together. Right, right. That's tricky to coordinate. But do, do you have a topic for the, epi- the third episode? Yes, yes, we actually do. We're, we're the main topic is to get to know us a little bit better and how we got into the Fallout. Got and it. then, cool. and then into that, we go into the why Fallout is more appealing for older people, like like when it first came out, mm-hmm. like we reword the question to make it like smart sound more better i gotcha i gotcha better, but wh- you know? why why it appeals to uh, an older demographic i gotcha yeah okay yeah cool and then cool. We're, we're deciding whether to include why fallout 76 does not have more pvp than it does but we're, we're going to bring it up at the production meeting and maybe make that its own episode 
Yeah, I can see that. Being, got a ton of stuff. Uh, it's on episode. Okay. Well, cool. Well, good luck with that. Um, thanks for joining me, everybody. And uh, let's see. I've you know where all my stuff is. Uh, robotsradio.net, All the different shows. So all the different lore casts. So this and Elder Scrolls and The Witcher lore cast and Mass Effect and Cyberpunk. Um, also, I'm streaming every night of the week on either Robots Radio's YouTube channel or the Twitch channel or the Facebook page. I'm all restreaming on all those different things, so you can come join us live on all those different platforms and uh do i have anything else going on i'm sure i have lots of things going on but uh you know it, just come hang out with us oh we've got the minecraft server now so you know pulled the community and was like hey you guys want to do a world thing where we can all keep a world running together and they were like yeah let's do it and i put put a list of different games we could do that with and minecraft won so i spent the money on a minecraft server and we got a bunch of people building awesome stuff in minecraft so come join us got some cool plugins going on and you can find the info for that on the robots radio discord which is also a place where you can go and chat with us about things like how you would survive in the wasteland i'd love to hear your stories on that as well um i'm also thinking about plugins yeah speaking of plugins i didn't get to plug my I have a Twitter account now. Yeah, go for it. It's at Fallout RTV. There you go. Yeah, go follow that as well. And um, uh, one last thing I want to say, but I forgot it. Um, oh, well, it probably wasn't that, that important. But uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Well, I'll be back next week with a regular episode as we get into February. And uh, until then, stay safe in the wasteland and good luck training that little baby Deathclaw. And if you, uh, uh, you know, it'd be awesome is if they added mountable animals in Fallout 76, so you could ride around on a Deathclaw. That would be freaking amazing. And a Abraham Lincoln suit in the uh, store, the Adam shop. Um, but now that I've said that, maybe it will become a real thing. If you're listening to this Fallout 76 developers, which some of you guys I know do, I'll see you guys later. Have a good week. Bye, everybody. Peace. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.